Hi cozy friends! So this year I feel like sparked a lot of collective interests either because we were all at home looking for something to do or maybe the virality of TikTok kind of pushing everyone towards the same interests or some combo of both, I don't know. But one of those things for me was definitely mechanical keyboards of all things. <laughs> and yes, they've been popular for a long time, both within the niche and probably outside of the niche for a long time. I'm not saying this is a new thing. <laughs> Some of us are just now discovering the joys of mechanical keyboards. So with this video, hopefully I can give you a little mini crash course into mechanical keyboards. It definitely won't be comprehensive, so know that. <laughs> but I will give you enough information to go forth and start your unhealthy obsession like I have. So my introduction to the mechanical keyboard world was TikTok. <laughs> seeing cute gamer girls and computer engineer girls showing off their switches and their keycaps and their boards and doing typing tests and I had no idea what was going on. I was so confused but I loved it. I loved I ate it up. I was like thank you yes 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 let me hear that ASMR that sweet sweet clickety clap. And then after getting a gaming PC I realized I too needed a keyboard. So this was my excuse to get into the world to join in those cute little TikToks, you know, because, you know, of course everything is just about the aesthetic. But that's when I decided to actually look into mechanical keyboards. That knowledge is what I'm going to share with you today. And I'll also be showing off the two keyboards I've gotten so far, which will be two of many of a lifelong collection of absolutely unnecessary keyboards. I promise you that. And one of those is from Yudzi Keyboard, who very kindly sent me their matcha red bean keyboard to review after I thirst liked every picture on their Instagram of it. So thank you, Yunzi Keyboard. I'm so excited to show that to you guys. So let's start off with what is a mechanical keyboard? Just, just what is it? What's the difference between, you know, a keyboard on a Mac? It's just the keyboards you think of when you think of the classic clickety-clackety keyboards. And yes, that is a technical term. And yes, you can quote me on that. So there's what's called a switch, which we'll talk way more about in a moment. And that switch is under each key that through mechanical processes registers each press of the key. And this differs from the common keyboards we use today on say like a Mac, because those just use a membrane between the key and the electrical circuit below. And that's what's registering the key press. So what are switches? So just to reiterate, it's the mechanical part under the key that's registering the press when your finger presses down on the key. To get a little bit technical, because I was interested interested and looked it up, the whole entire switch consists of the stem, which is the little part that pokes up, and that is what determines the key switch type, which we'll get into in a second. Then there's the spring, and then there's the housing around it, and the little metal part underneath that connects to the electrical circuit. So switches are the part of the keyboard that arguably hold the most preference in terms of what you want your keyboard to sound and feel like. So switches can affect the way the key feels when you press down on it, how it sounds. It affects the point at which the key actually registers when you press down on it before you bottom out the key, which is just pressing the key all the way down. It affects the amount of pressure you need to actually register a press and many other things. And there are many different kinds of switches which are defined by the color and those colors are usually consistent across different brands, so different manufacturers of the switches. But there's umbrella categories for all of those colors, and there's three main ones. There's linear, there's clicky, and there's tactile. And then the colors kind of fit within the spectrums of those. So linear switches are pressed down without any tactile feel, bump, click, anything. It's just pressed down, and that's how the press is registered. Tactile switches have a bump in the middle of the press that tells you when the press has been registered. And clicky switches are similar but instead of a bump it's a click. Now people feel very strongly about their switch type preferences. Very strongly. It seems like generally in the switch communities I've dabbled in that there's a kind of lean towards linear switches but I have seen people staunchly defend their tactile and clicky switches so who's to say what's more popular. I'm sure someone will know definitively but I I don't. <laughs> so when people refer to switches, you'll usually hear them referring to either Cherry MX or Gateron switches, though there's many more manufacturers. Those are just the main manufacturers and have been for a long time. And a lot of the switches are modeled after Cherry MX switches. At risk of getting too in the weeds, I'll just stick to the variants using this graphic. So this graphic kind of shows the spectrum of switch types. So within linear, 
there's black, silent red, red, speed silver. And within clicky, there's green and blue. And within tactile, there's gray, clear, and brown. So brown used to be the standard in keyboards. Like if you have an old, old keyboard, it's probably a brown switch, which means you'll probably be more used to the sound and feel of a brown switch. But over time, the trend has kind of shifted towards red switches. So if you go for a default mechanical keyboard nowadays, there's a high chance it'll be red switches. And a little, little tip, little insider tip. Not really, just a tip that everybody knows. If you go on either SoundCloud or YouTube and search the company, they'll sometimes have a database of all of the sounds of each of the colors that they manufacture. And if you can't find that, you will 100% find somebody on YouTube sampling the switch that you want to see sample. So if you're like, I don't understand like the benefits or the differences, like why you would care, it's just preference, you know? Do you want to feel something when you're clicking down on the keys? Do you want just to be consistent? Do you want to feel something? Go clicky tactile. If you want it to be consistent and kind of smooth, go linear. Linear can be quieter, clicky tactile, a little bit more clicky. Maybe if you're in an office space, uh, green or blue might not be the one for you. That rhymes. <laughs> that rhymed. But some people do prefer the fact that the clicky and tactile have that bump or click that you can feel because before you have to press the key all the way down and bottom out, you can know when to move on to the next key. So it's almost like you can be softly typing. And sometimes it takes a while to learn because you're so used to just like pressing the key till it bottoms out. It's just, there's so much to it, you know? It's so exciting. So something I've learned is that gamers often prefer linear switches because the consistency with which the button presses down is good for speed is good for just knowing when the button's gonna register you don't have to like wait for the click or think that you know did I click it did I not it's consistent it's fast and moving on to the board itself most mechanical keyboards have the switches built in which means you can't really change out the switches you're buying the board and the switch together however some boards now have hot swap options which means you can switch out the switches and I think they're making more of these now so if you're somebody who wants to try out different switches who wants to kind of swap between some every now and then or who wants to completely customize their entire board and have different switches in different parts and for different keys then a hot swap board is probably the one for you and my last tip on boards is that the actual board does matter please do research and look into the quality of the boards I do think it can be a mistake not to look at this as an investment but instead to look at it as like collectors items and just get as many boards as you possibly can for cheap because they won't last and they just won't be sturdy and good quality so think of it more as an investment and look at the boards that are sturdy good quality gonna last you a lifetime and lastly keycaps what about keycaps keycaps I think are the most fun part of the entire keyboard it's the most customizable there's so many color options out there you can put any keycaps on any switch so it's not like you have to match the switch type to the keycap type and all you need is a keycap puller to nudge under the keycap and pull it out and it's so simple to swap out all the keys and like I said the fun thing about keycaps is that there's so many color options they can be expensive but it's again it's because it's an investment and it's something that's gonna last you a long time and another fun part about keycaps is artisan keycaps which I found so many beautiful ones on Etsy it's basically like a little art piece of art on a keycap and I've seen you know cute animal ones cute food ones little biome ones succulent floral ones just the most amazing keycaps i've ever seen and you can kind of put them on your peripheral keys and it makes a board look so unique and so beautiful and i have so many on my wish list that i want <laughs> there are also different key profiles which i won't get too much into i'll just show this graphic and it affects the ergonomics of your typing definitely see which type would be best for you so those are the absolute basics of mechanical keyboards. I hope that's helpful to kind of thrust you into the world of mechanical keyboards. And now I'm really excited to show you mine that I have. Okay, this is the Mophie Candy M keyboard. And this one is not a conventional mechanical keyboard because the keys are round, the board is not kind of fit for normal keycaps. So this is less customizable. And I didn't get this with the in investment mindset or like even thinking of it as a mechanical keyboard. I kind of just got it because it was cute and I really wanted wanted a brown keyboard and I hadn't seen brown keyboards anywhere. These have blue switches. So this is in the clicky subgroup of switches and it's very loud and you can feel that click. You can hear it 
and that happens before I bottom out the key. So this is boop, boom, boop, boop. That's the click versus me pressing the key all the way to the bottom. So you really only have to press when you hear the click, so you can kind of lightly tap. You don't have to press all the way down on the keyboard. <laughs> so this is one type of mechanical keyboard you can get where it's less customizable, but it still has switches. Next is the star of the show, the keyboard from Yunzi Keyboard. This is the Matcha Red Bean Keyboard. It has Gateron pink switches and they have customizable options, but I chose Gateron pinks because I was very curious about them. Pinks are linear switches. Here's the difference. See, all you hear is just the sound of me bottoming out the key and it's really quiet in comparison to, I think even reds is quieter than reds. It's like a, a do, 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 do. I feel like I'm playing an instrument almost. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I just think it's so beautiful. It's so sturdy. It's so heavy, which I love because, listen, you're not carrying it around. It's gonna be on your keyboard. You want it to be sturdy, you want it to be heavy so that it doesn't move around on your on your desk. A flimsy keyboard is not what you want. These were originally the same green as this, but it comes with a little pack where you can customize a bunch of these different keys with the red bean color. It comes with a keycap puller. Here's the keycap puller. Da da da. Here's what you do. I'm just so excited about this. <laughs> There's no reason I am showing you this, just out of pure excitement. There's a cute little paw print that I would love to get, but it's all the way. <laughs> it's all the way on the other side. So I'm just gonna use this little skull guy instead. Okay. And I'm just gonna replace this paws pause button over here. So what you do is just shimmy, shimmy it under and pull. There you go. Beautiful pink switches underneath. Okay, and then to put it on, you just literally squeeze her on like that. Customization complete. And you can do that with as many of these keys as you want. I just can't say enough good things about this keyboard. My thing with keyboards is that I am a completely earth tone neutral person and I want my setup to be completely earth tone and neutral. I love all the RGB setups. I love the pink setups. I love those. I could stare at them all day, but I personally want an earth tone setup and there's just not many earth toned items out there, you know? There's not earth tone gamer chairs. There's not earth toned mouse and mice's, mouse's, mouse's. I just need more earth tone things, you know? So that's why I bought that brown keyboard and that's why I was immediately in love with this keyboard and why I thirst liked all of their pictures of it because I could not believe that this beautiful specimen existed. Yeah, definitely check out Yunzi keyboard, especially in, on the Instagram space of mechanical keyboards. There's so many companies. Yunzi just happened to be the one with the, the earth tone keyboard that I loved. So. So check them out if you want to just jump into mechanical keyboards and from their page you can find some other companies too but they're great okay that's enough uh, keyboard talk for today <laughs> thank you so much for watching I hope it helped even a little bit please share with me your mechanical keyboard journey please bonus points if you have anything amazing to contribute in the comments education wise stuff you learned stuff you wish you knew in the beginning of your mechanical keyboard journey as always I love you stay cozy bye I'm gonna make a video about the started board game someday so stay tuned for that <laughs> <laughs>